Hey YouTubers, Mike Boris with the Mike Boris channel. Thank you for watching. If you are joining us from the previous video where we showed you that thermostat leak and all that coolant spraying out at the thermostat, glad to have you. It's now time to address that and fix it immediately. Safety first, remove the negative terminal to your battery, cut all electrical power to the engine. Using a 10 millimeter socket and ratchet. Set this in a safe location where it's not going to hop back on the terminal of the battery. In the bottom left corner of your engine compartment, you'll notice the air filter box and this rubber hose that feeds out of your filter box and down to this portion. We need to remove that. Both top clamp and lower clamp are loosened up. From here, just carefully pull the hose off the top portion as well as the lower portion and set this in a safe location so it won't get harmed next we need to remove this electrical connection point on the very bottom you'll see a gray tab and the way to pull this tab off is carefully shift this plastic gray tab outward this way and as you pull this outward, you want to use your other hand to pull up on the actual plastic connection point. Just like that. And again, be very careful. You do not want to break this. We'll set this aside. Next, we need to remove this connection point. And this connection point does look a little unique, a little intimidating. However, these little groove portions here, one here and one on the opposite side, push and twist at the same time, and you can pull this part off. Also, what I did to make it easier, Pop this little wire out of the connection point here, and that'll give you better access to twisting this part as you pull it off. I'll need both hands. Also, unconnect the connection portion here and here, and that's going to give you a lot better access to twist this part. That is what it looks like when it is disconnected, and we want to set that aside. Next, let's direct our attention to this upper hose, and I grab that hook tool from AutoZone and I'm going to pull this clip up and release the clip. From here let's go ahead and back this hose off the actual thermostat. And be careful and use caution as you pull this hose rearward away from the actual thermostat. It's possible that it will leak a little bit of coolant. From here I've got the hose backed out and it's going to be a lot easier to gain access to this lower clamp to remove that hose. See the little clamp way down there? That's the bottom hose that connects itself to the thermostat housing. And it's very tricky to get those clamps loosened up and removed. So what we are going to do first, grab your 5 16 socket and ratchet. You've got a bolt here, another bolt here, and an additional bolt on the bottom. Let's remove this entire thermostat housing. And from there, it'll be completely free of the engine, minus that little hose right there. Do your best not to drop these bolts. It'll be tricky to find. That's what they look like. That third bolt, the lower bolt, is removed. And be advised, if you do it in these steps with that hose still connected, this spring inside the actual thermostat housing is pretty firm on its tension. And as you back that third screw out, it will push this housing out and possibly offset it. And when you back that bolt out, try not to cross thread or damage the actual thread. So what I recommend is holding this thermostat in place against the engine until you back that screw fully out. From here, we need to remove this hose. And this one is very beat up. It's broken, crumbling, and I'm going to remove as much as I can. There's the rubber gasket coming out with it as well. And set all this junk aside. From here, let's twist it slightly, get our pliers on those little clamp prongs there, compress it and shift this clamp down toward the lower portion of the hose off of this housing so we can remove it. Using pliers, I compressed this clamp, shifted it downward on the hose, and that is allowing me to remove this entire thermostat housing. That's what it looks like right there. Enter thermostat housing is completely removed. Take a few moments and clean the surface that the thermostat gasket will connect to. You want this clean and clear of all debris so the gasket can properly seat itself. New part is in. Let's go ahead and open up the box. Here is the part number. It is an aftermarket Dorman brand. 
and there is a very specific reason why I chose not to go with the original OEM GM part because as you can see the old GM part has failed miserably and there is the aftermarket dormant company that has reinforced this entire part so it doesn't fail and break even the plastic inside here broke so this piece is junk and cheap and the funny thing is this GM part costs $75 the reinforced stronger and more reliable part only costs 45 here is the new part again Dorman brand 902-808 is the part number there's the rubber gasket and this is a much stronger durable plastic than the original part it's gonna last a lot longer so let's reverse the steps we are going to compress that clamp and insert that hose on this portion of the thermostat housing new thermostat housing is in place and the clamp is secured on the hose see that little lip right there I want to reference the old part this little lip right here the hose is going to come on and connect and the clamp itself is going to go in between this lip here and this tab here and it is that clamp that secures the hose on this section of the actual housing and creates that watertight or coolant tight seal next thing we need to do is verify that the gasket the rubber gasket here is properly seated in the groove it's supposed to be in and we are going to reinsert those three bolts and secure them what I did first was hand tighten each bolt and because we're dealing with a rubber gasket we are going to tighten it evenly so I'm going to start at the very bottom bolt tighten that until it has a little bit of tension and then I'm going to move up top to this bolt tighten this with a little bit of tension and then move over to the opposite bolt and tighten these all evenly to properly seat that rubber gasket All three 5 16th bolts are properly and evenly secured. From here, remember that hose we disconnected earlier with that metal clip here? Let's reinsert this on the actual housing and make sure it's on tight. And once it's on tight, we need to press that clip all the way down so it secures itself. Next, grab this harness that we removed earlier and realign it properly and push until it clicks. As you can see here, that's on, secured, and it clicked. And earlier we took off this portion. I'm going to insert it back into that little connection tab here, as well as up top. Make sure it's properly seated in the connection portions that I removed it from earlier. Just like that. Next, the electrical connection point that we took off earlier. Let's realign that onto the connection point. And again, you will push down on this until it clicks. Just like that grab the rubber hose that we removed from the air filter box and align that properly that little groove as you can see here groove goes to groove and then on this portion of the engine make sure that is on and secure flathead screwdriver let's secure these clamps hose is secure now it's a good time to make sure you have no tools remaining or left behind in the engine that's the last thing you want starting this engine with tools in the engine compartment not good from here Let's go ahead and reconnect the negative terminal to the battery and secure the 10 millimeter bolt. That's it, YouTubers. See a pretty friendly DIY do it yourself project. We hope the video helped. From here, do us a favor below the video, you will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that for us, that would be awesome. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, definitely go to your settings, turn on your YouTube notification bell. Once you do that, every video that we upload, you will be notified, you'll be able to stay up to date with us, and we love that, that'll be awesome. Thanks for watching.